Hello, I'm Chris Mitchell. This is Sport Today. Coming up for you, Zero Tolerance, the English Premier League boss. Under pressure for his sexist emails, a campaigner tells us the UK should take an American stance when dealing with inequality. Making history, Van Gaal promises to return Manchester United to winning ways. And the San Antonio Spurs are one step closer to a return to the NBA Finals after they beat Oklahoma. Sexist emails, zero tolerance and the boss of the English Premier League. Hello, this is Sport Today. On Monday, the chief executive of the English Premier League, Richard Scudamore, was absolved of any wrongdoing by a panel made up of Premier League clubs. Scudamore had been sending sexist emails. This Tuesday, Lord Oosley, the chairman of an equality group, Kick It Out, told this programme that the process of the investigation was flawed and that English sport needs to adopt a different North American approach when dealing with inequality. I think we haven't got the same rigour and ruthlessness when it comes to dealing with matters pertaining to equality, uh, inclusion uh, and, and administering justice. I think every now and then we will slap down participants like players, which we do, and I think we've got that process almost right. However, uh, I do think that the example in the United States of where you take a, a, an absolute zero tolerance uh, approach to offences which are denigrating black and ethnic minority people, women, and on the grounds of homophobia and, uh, and against disabled people. And if we can have that, then quite clearly I think we would see uh, a massive uh, amount of confidence that there would be uh, justice being administered to those who feel, however powerful they are, that they can be offensive to others uh, with impunity. Okay, have you remembered to send your birthday card to your mum or to your boyfriend? It's important, you know. Forget such things and you could land yourself in trouble. Consider Yaya Torre. His agent says he could leave the champions Manchester City before the start of next season after a row over his birthday. Dimitri Selic has told the BBC the club don't make him feel valued. Selic said Torre was particularly upset on his birthday. He did get one of these, a birthday cake, presented to him on an aeroplane with the team en route to Abu Dhabi. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Apparently, Torre, who signed a new four-year deal with City last season, was not impressed. Selleck says Torre didn't expect a present after turning 31 earlier in May, but the BBC African Footballer of the Year was unhappy at being ignored by the club's wealthy owners when the squad arrived in the United Arab Emirates. Selleck said, what happened at his birthday meant the club don't care about him. It was proof. In a normal team, his teammates and club would at least give him good wishes. He's very upset and he started thinking of leaving the club. And he will leave if things carry on like this. Ashley Cole, a former England international, says he will leave the Premier League side Chelsea. Cole, who's been at the club for almost a decade, won the European Champions League with them in 2012. He tweeted last night... On Monday night, I'm weighing up my options for playing next season with my agent. And sadly, it doesn't look like Chelsea will be one of them. Thank you, Chelsea FC, for making my eight years there a pleasure to work. All the staff and players, we've been through a lot, good and bad. And to the fans that have stood by me through thick and thin, I will always have you in my heart. Now I'll be looking for another journey in my life. Hope it can be like my others, full of fun and, of course win something. Manchester United's new manager Louis van Gaal has been talking to Dutch television and he's promised to make history and return United to winning ways. These are pictures of him heading to a training camp in Portugal with his Netherlands squad ahead of the World Cup. Van Gaal has been given a three-year contract at what he describes as the biggest club in the world. He's been tasked with turning the fortunes of the club around after their worst season in a quarter of a century. I'm uh, very fine. I'm very happy and also proud that I can be uh, the trainer coach of uh, such a big club as uh, Manchester United. 
he deserves this because uh, his career was a fantastic career and 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 to come now for the first time to England and for a club like uh, Man United I think is something that his career deserves and I think for the Premier League to come and join us I think is good. Barcelona have confirmed that their former player Luis Enrique has signed a two-year deal to become their new head coach. The 44-year-old played 300 games for the Catalan Cup in two spells, scoring 109 goals. This season, he had been in charge of fellow Primera Division side Celta Vigo, but quit, quit midway through the two-year contract to take up the position at Camp Nou. This guy is 38 years old and he's still doing it for the San Antonio Spurs, last season's NBA finalists. They made most of home court advantage as they beat Oklahoma City Thunder 122 to 105 in game one of the NBA's best of seven Western Conference finals. The Spurs in wide had lost all four of their games against the Thunder in a regular season but produced a superb offensive display. That three-pointer from the Australian point guard, Paddy Mills. Kevin Durant wriggling to the basket here, led Oklahoma with 28 points. But the Thunder trailed for most of the game, you have to say. The Spurs veteran forward, Tim Duncan, here he goes, scored a team-high 27 points. Incredible. Argentina's Manu Ginobili weighing in with 18 as well. But the night belonged to Duncan at 38. He was surely the star. I don't know if that was that easy, but uh, we were taking what, uh, what we were given. Um, we knew we'd be able to uh, uh, get into the middle um, and uh, attack a little uh, more than we have. That's kind of what's been there historically against them, and we were just able to make some shots tonight. To the NHL, and the New York Rangers beat the Montreal Canadiens 3-1 in Quebec to take a 2-0 lead in their Eastern Conference Finals. It had started well for Montreal. They took the lead when Henrik Lundqvist's Attempted clearance went in off Max Pacioretty. That was just six minutes into the first period. Just 17 seconds later, though, New York drew level. Ryan McDonough, scrappy goal, but crucial. Despite conceding that early goal, Rangers' star of the night was goaltender Lundqvist. He made no fewer than 40 saves. The Rangers went on to seal the victory with further goals from Rick Nash and this power play effort from Martin St. Louis. Now, nasal strips. Did they ever work? They do for California. Chrome, the horse, is the star of the racing world in America at the moment. First, he won the Kentucky Derby, and then on Saturday, he streaked home to win the Preakness Stakes. But it seemed that a strange rule in New York may have put pay to his attempt to, tr to win the Triple Crown. That's what he would do if he wins next month's Belmont Stakes. The horse wears a nasal strip, which is banned by stewards in New York, but this has been overturned and it'll help him breathe easy as he attempts to become the first horse to win the three big US races since affirmed in 1978. But why does he need it? I think in, in theory it helps open up the nasal passage which allows more oxygen to get into their system while they're racing. Um, some horses will appreciate that, some horses may not like that nasal strip and it may actually slow them down. They may be thinking, gee, what's on my nose here? What's going on? And they get distracted. They really do work, you know. That was sport today.